The basic concept we're going to do now is, is programming the classic game of asteroids. And this is the game of asteroids and has some different components. And we want to see if we can kind of make a version of this that can run, uh, run in processing. And um, one uh, dimension in this is we're going to simplify it a little bit here and there. So we're not going to make the uh, jagged edges, we're just going to make circles instead. Um, welcome. So, the basic concept is uh, some uh, spaceship, and then the spaceship can shoot some bullets, and we have some meteors that is going to kind of be the, the, uh, what we are going to kind of shoot down. And um, in, our, in our case, we're going to make some circles, and then we're going to make a spaceship. It might just be a block. Maybe we're going to do something more advanced. And then the, the block is going to shoot out small bullets like this. That is the basic concepts of asteroids, the asteroids version we are going to make. So to show you how to program this, we're going to go into processing and open a new window up and start programming. And we're going to use classes and objects and object-oriented programming to do this. So where normally we would have like a, a float x, something up here, and a float y, something up here, we're then going to kind of wrap these data, data into classes. And the way we're going to do that is actually to start classifying the different kinds of objects and what they have w w in them. So the meteors will have an x and a y axis. And they might have a size as well. And they might have some direction, some uh, speed in some direction, and then some direction in, in the other axis as well, in the y axis. So this is probably the data we're going to use to make one meteor. And then, you know, this one is going to have a y, x and y axis and some speed as well. And then it's going to have, um, and that's probably about it. And then this, the bullets is going to have some X and Y and some speeds. So this is the objects we need to kind of program to make this game. These are the classifications for the different types, types of, uh, of objects in the, in, the, in the system. And we're going to write that in the top. So the first class we're going to do, we're going to first make a meteor here. So we're going to say class. A meteor, and then we're going to wrap it around in curly braces so we kind of define what is kind of a part of this, what is the scope or the definition of a meteor. We have a float x and a float y, and then we will need a float dx to get a direction and a float dy to get a direction on the other axis. And then we want a size as well because we want different sizes of meteors in this game. So this is kind of the basic class we're going to do. And then we have the, diff, uh, the, the basic setup in processing. We have a void setup and a void drawer. And then we have the size. I'm going to do, I don't know, 500 times 500. And then the background is going to be zero because then we have a clear background. We have to remember to do that. Um, so we kind of get something up and running. So this meteor, to use this meteor, because we have many meteors, we have one, two, three, four, five, six in this case, and we're gonna, probably going to have more than that. We actually want to have a list of meteors. So we want to kind of make a, what in Excel would be a spreadsheet, a list of meteors with the different parameters. So there's an X and Y, and then maybe there's 10 and 5 and 100 and 150 and 20 different kind of positions of the meteors in the kind of in the, the different data. So to make this list, we need to create an array list. And an array list is uh, just a, a flexible container that can contain multiple uh, multiple objects of the same kind. So in this case we define it that the array list is going to contain meteors and we are going to call it meteor list and then we need to create this list. So we need to say new and then say array list. So we need to repeat ourselves here to first define what it is and then create one of them. And that's what we're doing there. So what we have done now is actually just to say now we have an empty meteor list. It's completely empty. It's just we have just said we want a list, a list of meteors. That's it. We haven't put any meteors into it. So the connection between this and this is only by definition, it's not that we actually have live objects inside the meteor list. So to have uh, uh, meteors inside the meteor list, we need to kind of 
push them in or kind of create uh, objects from the, cla uh, the class and then uh, insert them into the list. And to do this, the simplest way is just to use an, um, a, a for loop. So we are going to do something like this. Let's say we're going to create 20 meteors and then we're going to say it's going to count <coughs> one up all the time. So this is the for loop to create the meteors and to add the, it to the kind of list. So the first thing we need to do is to create kind of a new meteor. So to do that, we're going to say new meteor equals uh, um, a new meteor like this. <coughs> and what this says is I want a, a meteor, I want a new meteor, I'm going to call it new meteor. And it's of the type meteor. That's it. That's what it says. So now we have a meteor here, and we can add it to our array list. And we do this by saying meteor list uh, dot add new meteor. So now we have added it to the list. And because we run this 20 times, there's a for loop that creates that runs this 20 times. We will now have added 20 meteors to our list. We are not doing anything with them. We are not showing them on the screen. There's nothing presented. All we have done now is say, all right, let's create um, 20 meteors. So to be able to present them down here, we have to do multiple things. First of all, we have to, um, we have to run through the list and kind of tell each meteor to kind of show each meteor. Also, we have to code something about what it means to present them. So in this case, in this case it's just a circle, so we can use the ellipse command to kind of draw them on the screen. So to do this, we need another for loop down here. So we have one for loop that's in the beginning in setup, and we have one for loop that's down in draw. And the for loop in draw is going to kind of run through it and uh, present it on the screen. So it says 20 here, but since we might add meteors or remove meteors, it's much more wise in the draw loop to just get the size of the list. That means if we add some to the list, we always get the updated amount of meteors on the screen because that's contained inside the list. The amount of meteors on the list equals the amount of meteors we have to draw on the screen anyways. So to do this, we have to somehow kind of present this. And we could write ellipse here and kind of get the data and do stuff like this. But a neat way to do it is actually to extend the class of a meteor to also contain methods, a method of how to present itself. That means that the knowledge of how I'm going to draw myself is actually contained within the class instead of being contained outside of the class. So that means kind of we group together the information that is kind of in the same category. So everything, we kind of try to take everything that has to do with a meteor and put it into the meteor class. And we do that by using a void. So in the same sense, we have a void setup here, which is a kind of a, a global uh, starting init uh, thing. Then we can make one here that's called void show, which is going to show the meteor. And then we need to say, how are we going to present it? Well, we want to make a circle, so that's an ellipse. And then we can say the position is x and y. And it's um, size width and size for height. So it's the same width and height, and then it becomes a circle. So the x and y here is the x and y that's up here because they're kind of within the same class of meteor. And that means the closest one it will get is that one there. So down in draw now, we can then present this meteor. And we do that by pulling out the meteor from the list and then ask it to call show, call the method show. So then we'll present the meteor. So we do that by saying meteor, uh, no, we're going to say yes, like this, and say current or selected, it might be the right word to use, selected meteor equals meteor list dot get. And then we get the i from the, the, the iterator here from the for loop and kind of pull it out here. And the next thing we do is just to say dot show, and then we call the show function that calls this one up here. So the dot notation here is a way to kind of say, we have an object, we're going to say dot, and then show, that means go into the object and call this void that's called show. Within show, there is an ellipse, hence it's going to print an ellipse on the screen. And the difference here with this line in the for loop compared to the one up here in the, in the setup part is that here we create a new one, we say new meteor, so we kind of convert a class 
from a class to an object say, all right, we want an object of this classification and we use that and add it to the list. Here we go into the list, we take our list, we say get at the met meta war at this position, at the I position, pull it into this temporary name called selected metaor, and then we ask that metaor to be shown. So if we run it now, we get something that's kind of in the direction of what we want, but it is not showing anything at all. Yeah, okay, it's not showing anything at all. So the first thing is, there's multiple things here that's going wrong. Uh, actually, they are up here in the corner, but we have actually told it to be at the X and Y position, which is up here, zero, zero. And then we set the size in this one here to zero. That means we are making a zero sized uh, ellipse, which is basically not present. So we still need to kind of initialize these numbers individually for each metaor, because we want each metaor to be positioned at different places. So if you look here, we want kind of different X and Y positions. So they are uh, placed around, scattered around in the space. The simplest way to do this is to somehow initialize it as we created here. Now we create it, then we also need to initialize the numbers. And um, put simply, we'll make a init, an init method to initialize all the metaors. So let's uh, say x should be random uh, width of the screen, and that is from zero to width. That's basically the same, but it looks nicer to write zero here as well. So now we get a random number from zero to width and put that into the X and we get a random number from zero to height and put into the Y. And then we need the size to be randomly as well. And I have no idea what size would be nice, but let's just do something random and see what happens. Maybe a little bit smaller. Then we have really kind of a diff big difference between small and big uh, metaverse. So when I run this now, nothing new is going to happen. It's the same thing. There's nothing here on the screen. And the reason why there's nothing on the screen is because we never call this initializer. We never say, all right, let's in, uh, run this code. We just, we just said, now we have a, a method called init. And inside that, you have three commands we're going to run. But it's never run because this one is never run. So we need to call that. And we do that in setup because we want to initialize as we kind of create the metaors. So we say new meteor dot init, and then you know we call that method up there. So this method up here is not some magical init method that processing knows what to do with. We could call it Hugo or we could call it something else. It doesn't matter. It's just something we came up with. It's just a name. So init and show is just something we named it, and then we need to call them at a specific places. So init is initialize, and that is when we kind of initialize everything in setup. And show is for every frame in draw, we're gonna, gonna call show. So now there should be metaphors scattered around on the space here. We have them kind of uh, presented on the screen. But right now they are not moving, um, and that might be the next obvious step. I wanna do one more thing. I don't think I don't like the stroke, the, the, the black stroke, so I'm just gonna write no stroke here just to make it more kind of pretty or something like that, much more pretty. So to make them move around, we need to use the DIX and DIY as we did in the kind of uh, Pong game. We need to kind of say for each frame, move one position in the X and or the Y direction. And to do this, we need to do the same trick by saying X equals X plus DIX, Y equals Y plus DIY. So now we kind of told it to kind of move the amount that is contained within this one for each frame. The problem here is that they're still zero, so it's not gonna move anywhere. So we need to initialize those two numbers as well. So we're gonna say random, and then we're gonna say minus three to three, then they move around quite fast, and random minus three to three. And this will allow them to kind of move around in the space. Then the next problem we have is they're gonna kind of disappear outside the screen pretty fast. And then we need to kind of program something, say what is gonna happen when it, that happens. In the Pong game, it was kind of logical that it bounces on the edge and it kind of a pool table kind of, table kind of um, what do you call it, the uh, emulation. But in this case, I wanted to kind of wrap around to kind of if show a, a, a vast space so when it moves on the other side here it should kind of reappear on the other side here. 
And to do this, I need down in show, I need to kind of make some logic around it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say if x is larger than width, <coughs> then I'm going to say x equals 0. So if, if the ball is outside the, the x-axis here, it's going to jump back and be moved back to 0 here and be back here and kind of appear on the other side. And we need to do that for all four borders, so that is also as you know, the other side, and then we need to say, then it should be with, and then we need the y, and that is, if that is higher, bigger than height, then we need to set it to zero, and then we need to say, uh, if it's less than zero, then we need to set it to the height. Yep. All right, so, now we have all four borders with all four if statements kind of checking up on where they are positioned. And now they kind of come reappear on the other side as they move around, so it's kind of consistent as like this moving space system. It's quite fast. I think this is going to be a little bit tricky game to play, so I'm just going to lower the speed a little bit. Maybe two is the sweet spot. We're going to do that. All right, so now we have kind of our metaverse up and running, and that means we are missing two parts now. We are missing the spaceship and the bullets, and kind of connect those two. So uh, to do this, I'm going to just clean up a little bit, because right now we have the class definition is on top of our sketch, and I, it's actually nicer just to add it to a new tab, because then it kind of it's separated in another tab. It doesn't do any difference in processing. It's pretty much the same thing. But it's kind of nice to have like your objects up here as tabs. Then I'm gonna make another tab that's gonna gonna call the spaceship. So we have the spaceship, uh, and this is gonna be our kind of our spaceship class defining the spaceship. If my computer wants to update, it's happy again, <coughs> and it should be an a spaceship. Good. So this spaceship is going to have somewhat similar things as the Metaor, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit, because this is quick and dirty and copy-paste here. Doop. So we need an x and a y, and dx and a dy, and then we need an um, init and a show as well, but we need i. I'm going to write that from the bottom up, because else you're going to be confused. So we're going to do an init and a show. Um, and the init has to have like x, uh, and the start position should be, I don't know, width. Just, just start in the middle. It's simple. So now it's starting in the middle of the screen. Maybe it actually it should start, the height should probably be the height minus 100. And it's the kind of down in the bottom of the screen, but in the middle, in the width. That's kind of nice. And the show, and I'm just going to use a rectangle for this one. So it's x and y. And then it's um, width is going to be 100, and the height is going to be 20. So that's our little spaceship here. So this is kind of the definition of the spaceship, what the <coughs> spaceship needs to run. But we're still missing kind of the, um, to, write, to present it on the screen. So, so now, now nothing happens. It's just a classification. It's not there on the screen. If we wanted to have more than one spaceship, we would make one more line of this just with the spaceship, but in this case we just want one spaceship, so we're just going to create one object of the spaceship. So we're going to say spaceship and then say my ship equals new space ship. Um, Pretty much the same thing as we do here. Now we just do it up here because then it's a global variable. It's going to stay there. We can change the, the position of it and we can kind of uh, move it around on the screen. Um, so my ship <coughs> needs to be initialized and it needs to be shown. So the first thing I've been set up is to initialize it. And the next thing is to show it down here, and we don't show it inside the for loop because then we're going to show it, print it uh, for each frame the amount of times that there are meters. But we're going to just do it right outside, so here for example, and say show. And then we have a spaceship on the screen. Oh, that's a really wide spaceship. We're going to make it less wide. This is probably better. We still need to kind of move it around with the keys, so that will be the next obvious step, is to figure out a way to move this spaceship around on the screen. 
And the way to do this is to use the key pressed thing we used before. So I'm just gonna jump down here and say void key pressed. So this method is gonna be called every time a key is pressed on the keyboard. And then we can kind of make some logic on it. We can say if key equals a, then you know we want to move in to the left. And moving to the left, we're going to use the same principle as we use for the metaor, which is these x and y here. We're going to copy that into the spaceship show here. So we have those as well. So now we're going to use the x and y up here to kind of make directions, because then we can actually have multiple keys down at the same time. So I'm going to say my ship dot dear x equals, and this is to the left, so it's minus one should be correct. And then we need to do the same thing for D, just with a positive sign. And then we need to do the same thing for S, and then it needs to be the Y, and it should be a positive sign. And then we need to do the same thing for W, and it should be a minus sign and a Y. So now we should have moving around kind of re uh, ready here at key pressed. And nothing happens. What did I miss? Oh, yeah, no. I have it here. Boom, boom. My ship show spaceship. G X and Y. G X and Y. What did I miss? Anybody who has a good idea what I missed? Boom, boom. Yes. No, I'm I'm using the wrong keys. I'm using the. <laughs> I'm using the arrow keys instead of the A and D. Yeah, yeah, it's working. I just have to remember what keys I'm using. So it's working, but it's never standing still. So when I stop pressing the keys, it's uh, it kind of moves around and keeps on moving around. And that's because I never register when I release a key. When I release a key, it should stop. And to do this, I need to say void uh, key released like that. And then I need to reset the, 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 the speed. And I can do that by doing this and then saying zero on each one of them. So basically when I release one of the keys, it will get an event saying is the key released and then it will say okay, then I will stop the ship on that direction. So now I have like this spaceship feeling that I can kind of move it around and kind of navigate around the meteors and not be shot and uh, so forth. It's kind of scary because they're moving faster than me, so it's it's really tough game now. I'm pretty much gonna lose every time. Oh right. Oh well. Good. Um, I need to. What do we need now? We need to uh, do. Uh, we can actually make. What is the next obvious thing here? And now I don't can't move anything around. Is that because of the key thing? It's also a problem on yeah it is, isn't it? Uh, okay, so the latest Macs have some problems with the key holding keys down for a long time. I think I ran into that. Some people solved it by writing P3D here for some strange reason. Let's see if that fixed it. Yeah. So now it works again. It's a strange bug, but okay, we at least know how to fix it on the latest Mac OS X. So, um, now we need to make collision detection. So what we need to do is that when I collide with a meteor, it should, uh, the ship should die or something bad should happen. So when I move it around here and it crashes or crashes into something, it should uh, die. So to do this, I'm just going to check how much space I have on my drive, just to be sure that we can record the rest. It seems like it's going to be a tight squeeze, probably going to be okay. So to make the collision detection, we need to check on each meteor. So basically what we need to do is say, did this meteor collide with the ship? Did this meteor collide with the ship? This one or this one or this one or this one? And the way we do that is to kind of see the distance between the center point of the meteor and the center point of the, of the rectangle. It's a very kind of cheap, dirty trick to kind of get the, the, the collision. So it's not going to be perfect. If the rectangle looks like this and we have a circle, then the distance is going to be somewhat different when it's here and when it's here. So it's not going to be perfect. It's pretty much going to be like a circle here we're going to detect on. So it's not a perfect solution, but it's going to be good enough for our little installation here. 
So to do this, we need to check the distance for each metaor and see if they hit the ship. And we do that into the draw in the for loop by saying um, if distance, that's the distance method we can use for it, selected metaor.x, comma selected metaor.y, comma uh, my ship, dot x, comma my ship, dot y. And if that is a certain amount, then we should do something with it. So let's say the size of the selected metaor would be something divided by 2 plus something of the ship, which is, I don't know, 10 because it's 20 high. Then we have something somewhat close. And never ever a semicolon after a if statement. I just did the, the biggest sin. So what is going wrong here? I have two of those, I should only have one. All right, so in here, this will be when we have a collision between a meteor and a, and the ship. So when I run around with my ship here, we should get a message saying, hey, we collided. Yeah, it says, ooh, yeah, it's hard to see. I should probably add something that tells me the ID of the, of the meteor because then I can see if it changes down here in the kind of console. Yeah, so do we have a collision? Uh, no. There's no collision. There's something about the corner thing we have to look into as well. But why don't we have any collisions? It was in the beginning, but now there's none. Let's see what we did wrong. X, Y, X, Y, that's correct. Selected meter dot size divided by 2 plus 10. That soon seems about right as well. What did I miss? Oh, it's it's actually col same collision. Oh, it's colliding all the time, basically. So if it's bigger than, oh, <laughs> smaller than. So um, the distance should be smaller than this size. If it's bigger than, it's pretty much everyone. It's kind of everyone that's far away from you. So it should be close to you. So that's the error I did. So let's see, now we don't have a collision and now we collided with something. Yes, it seems like something is working. Yes, something is working. We are colliding once in a while when we are close enough to a, a, a meteor. But we have one problem and that is that the, actually the, the rectangle is actually using this as its x and y point. So it's in the corner of the rectangle and we want to kind of go from here. And we can solve that by just changing the rec mode of the spaceship when we draw it. So we can just say rec mode and then say center. And then we can just change it back in case we're going to do other things and we expect it to be in the corner. Like that. So now it looks like this here. It's the same, but now we kind of have it in the middle. Yes, good. So now we want to die. We want the meteor to die and the ship to die. And there's, there's kind of no kind of death scenario, but we can actually make something about life points. So you may lose a life every time you hit a meteor. So we can say, um, we can say float lives equals to zero. And then we can initialize, we can say lives equals three, just to make sure that we have some lives when we start the game. So the my ship, is gonna kind of lose a life every time it hits a meteor. Minus one. And down in it, then we need to print the lives down in the, oh, yeah, it's correct. Then we need to print the live, lives on the screen. We can do that here, say text, and then say uh, uh, lives, colon plus, and then we can say, I don't know, 30, 30 in the position. So now we kind of lose a life and we can pr present on the screen how many lives we have. The other part we have to do is kind of kill the meteor because that's a simple way not to have multiple collections on the meteor. And to do that, we need to say remove and then the in index number. And that means, okay, remove this meteor from the list. Uh, not selected meteor, of course, meteor list, like that. So we remove it from the meteor list. So every time you collide with a meteor, the meteor is going to disappear. And the, the, the ship is going to lose one, one life. 
So, and there's no rule. I mean, I can get minus lives up here, so I'm just losing lives. But there's no rule. I like you're dead, or you have to restart the game. We can do that uh, in another round. Right now, it's a matter of getting the basic kind of interaction up and running. So the next thing we want, need to do is to add some bullets to it. Bullets is a new class. I'm gonna call it bullet. And we're gonna add some of the same properties. It's interesting how when we do game design, we quite often we're gonna use pretty much the same things on each class here. Oh, it's there. Um, so we need to initialize it, and this time I'm gonna be sloppy and just steal because it's pretty much the same as the spaceship in this case, except that we don't have lives. Um, and we don't we don't really use an init actually because we're gonna set the position manually when we shoot the bullet and then we need instead of a rect we need a ellipse here because it has to go from a bullet is a circle so it makes sense to have an ellipse and also i want to make it red because it's a dangerous bullet and uh, everything else is white so we're going to make a red bullet and then we're just going to reset the, the fill to to white again so we we don't mess up the other parts so this is kind of the basics of a bullet um, and then we need to add this bullet and the case is when we shoot when we press space bar we want to shoot a bullet so it's something about going down to keep pressed and adding a kind of a if statement of space so this bullet is not initialized and in set up like the other things up here are initialized and set up but the bullet is actually initialized when we press space because it's only when we shoot a bullet we want to have create a bullet a new bullet so we're going to check on the key and check if it's a spacebar, and that's just making a space character like this. We need to add double of those. So in here we can say um, a bullet, uh, a new bullet equals new bullet, and then we create a bullet. But this bullet is positioned in, in 0, 0.0, so it's up in the corner of the, sh of the screen right now. We want to position it on the ship. To do this, we say new bullet. Dot uh, x should be equal to my ship dot x new bullet dot y my ship dot y yes and then we need to give it some speed as well so we need to give it a direction and that is in the y direction and we need it to move up which is minus so we kind of say minus two is kind of the way we're going to create this bullet so when we have the bullet now my computer has really pressed it's recording the screen and everything at the same time. Nothing happens, so I missed something. Oh, yeah. I'm actually creating the bullet here down in spacebar, but I'm not drawing it anywhere in draw. So I'm not actually showing the bullet on the screen. To do this, we need to run through... Uh, oh, we need to actually a list as well. We just created it here. We actually need an array list because we're going to have multiple bullets. So there's two things I forgot to do here because I was too fast. One thing is we need an array list like this one. We need one for bullets. So bullets and bullets and bullets. Um, and then we need to add it to that list. We do that down here. Bullet list equals and uh, add, and then we say new bullet like that and it looks like it's happy did I do this things right here yeah it looks right good and then we run, need to run through it like we are running through our meteor list here we need to run through all our bullets and uh, here it definitely comes in handy to use size because we are going to have a very dynamic amount of bullets on the screen at the time and using size just allows us to run through the amount of bullets that are present at the moment so we have a for loop here running through all the bullets and like this meteor or selected meteor or meteor list we're going to do the same thing. Actually, am I? No, I want to show you another strategy. Instead of writing this and then pulling it out and then saying dot show, we can actually do it a little bit more shorthand and just say bullet list dot get i dot show. So I don't know if I'm actually if this is a good strategy in the long run. I'm not sure. But for now, it's it's kind of a sweet little simple way to do it on one line. 
Actually, I think it's okay because we're going to do it in another place. We're going to run through it and actually use the bullet. So now we have tiny small bullets. Wow, they're really tiny. <laughs> tiny bullets from our spaceship here. Tiny red bullets. And every time I press the space bar, it can generate a lot of bullets. So we have like a shooting spaceship and we have some meteors. And I'm losing lives like crazy. I'm at minus eight lives now. It's not a really... I'm not good at this game or it's too hard. The next thing we have to do is then to check the collision between the bullets and the meteors. And the problem here is that this is a little bit more complicated than the collision, uh, collision between the ship and the meteors because we have a many-to-many -many relationship. So whereas the ship has one entity to many, with the bullets we have many bullets and many meteors. And that requires us to check for each bullet check each meteor and see if there's a collision and we do like this we brute force our way through it and check like this compare each one of them like that so it's a lot of operations to kind of make sure of doing this correctly especially when uh, if you have lo loads of bullets or loads of meteors then it's it's very exponential so to do this we need to go into our processing i'm just going to double check the space this looks okay God. So we need to go into processing and we need to run through the meteor list and then we need inside that we need to run through the bullet list and compare the two and see if there's a collision. And that means I need two for loops inside for loops here. So I need basically to use this for loop in here as well. So now we actually have the for loop here that's going to show the bullets and then we have the same for loop in here which is not going to show the bullets, but it's going to check if there's a collision between the meteor list and the bullet list, basically. I cannot have I inside I like this. That would be, a, you know, a two definition of the same variable. So I need to find another one. I'm using J. And uh, here I actually want to say uh, bullet dot, uh, no, uh, selected bullet equals bullet list because I'm going to use it quite a lot so I need to kind of pull it out of the list and actually work with it like this where in this case where I wanted to show it there was only one case I just wanted to show it so no reason to pull it out of the list I could just call show directly. All right so now we now need to compare the collision between the selected bullet and the selected meteor and then I have a problem because these are afterwards so that's kind of weird that's not going to be a good strategy I need to copy this up so it's in before like that. Um, to do this, I need to make an if statement just like with the dist here. With dist, we have the, the um, uh, collision between the ship and the meteor, and I need to do the same thing in here, just between the selected bullet and the selected meteor. So I say if dist selected meteor dot x selected meteor dot y comma selected bullet dot x comma and this is a long line so I'm just going to press enter I'm allowed to do that and just write underneath here um, selected bullet dot y and that one should be smaller than why are you annoyed did I do something wrong or is it just because it's not over yet it might be because it's not over yet is that why yeah it is so I just wrote 10 to kind of see if there was some correction error. But I need to say selected meteor dot size divided by 2. And then the bullet size, I know the bullet size is um, 5. So I need to say 5 divided by 2 as well. So I kind of get half of the size of the meteor and half of the size of the bullet. If this is the case, we have a collision and then we need to kind of kill the bullet and kill the meteor. So we need to say meteor list dot remove up here and then we need to say bullet list dot remove as well and that should be the J so remember to kind of keep track of it the bullet list is the J and the I is, is for the, the meteor list so it's important to keep track of these two which one you're using. So if you do this I should be able to shoot bullets now let's see Oh, that was a collision. Oh, we crashed. It says index out of bounds. Oh, that's because I actually made the mistake I just warned you about. Remember to have the right one. This is the bullet list, and that's the J, and that's the one we use here, the for loop for. So, 
Let's see if it works. Yes, I can shoot bullets now. So now we have like the basic concept of asteroids. What's missing here is actually the rotation of the ship. So how it's rotated uh, on the kind of uh, on the um, where you kind of rotate it around and shoot around you. Right now I can only shoot up, so it's kind of like a mix between I don't know space invaders and uh, and uh, and um, uh, asteroids.